on NPI brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey Analog Devices is what the I on NPI is this week. And that's the new product introductions of what is NPI stands for. Lady Ada, what is the I on NPI this week? I'm glad you asked. It's a two-parter. It's the uh, Max Ref SD78 camera. It's like a long number, but really it's a dev board for the um, Max 78000, which is a Cortex M4 processor with machine learning uh, convolutional neural network built in. And this is a cool like all-in-one camera and audio dev board kit. Um, it's got an image sensor camera. It's like an OB series. It's got, uh, I guess, flash LEDs, um, a bunch of buttons, a headset audio um, connector for input and output. Uh, it's got a micro SD card. It's also got a built-in microphone. And on the other side, it's got a capacitive touch, um, a power button, and micro USB, uh, sorry, and micro USB type C connector that can be used for just like USB or for programming it with the SWD dongle, uh, which comes with it. And what this is, is a, is a development board for video on the edge processing. So, you know, oftentimes you're doing uh, video or image processing, you're using something like a Raspberry Pi or a single board computer if you're not using a desktop, but that uses a lot of power. Um, what if there was a processor that basically had like a built-in AI core that made processing audio and video really, really fast. And that's what this is. Um, it's a, a chip that has, um, sorry, the next one, the Mac 78000, which is a special microcontroller from Maxim Now Analog Devices. It's a uh, Cortex M4, but it's got also a RISC-V coprocessor, tons of GPIO, tons of memory, and this neural network accelerator. So what normally would be like a separate you know, on desktop, they call them CUDA, you know, graphics devices, or, you know, you'd have like a coral stick or something that's built into the processor. And so it can do very fast, you know, as fast as a, um, you know, single board Linux computer, but without the power. And of course, the instant startup, um, uh, you know, can run off a battery, can go into low sleep mode, all stuff you expect from a mic controller, lower cost, smaller size, um, instant boot up time without the complexity of having like a full Linux setup. Um, so this is the description of the chip. So on the left, it's you know it's a powerful it's a powerful chip, uh, Cortex M4 with an FPU um, running at 100 megahertz. It's got uh, half a mega flash, 120k of RAM. There's also a ton of RAM in the CNN, the accelerator, and that's because you can actually load the model and all of your data into RAM, so it like loads instantaneously. Like you don't have to worry about like caching it in flash or like reading enough like external memory. Um, like a QSPY flash memory because it's all in RAM uh, and you can execute from within RAM or up, you know, update from RAM within one instruction cycle, you get really, really fast updates. You can see uh, you know, almost a megabyte of data memory just for your image and model. Um, also, all the peripherals you expect, I2S, PWM, I2C, SPI, UART, da, da, da. It's, a full, you know, it's a full Cortex M4. It just got this uh, cool accelerator uh, uh, plugged onto the side. Um, so here's more detail about the convolutional neural network. So, you know, basically, you know, when you're dealing with uh, machine learning models, there's a lot of mathematics that you have to do. You have to like multiply these, these tensors together um, and you convolve them to get data out that then goes through multiple, multiple, multiple uh, layers. You know, every layer adds complexity and adds more time, um, but allows you to do more uh, complicated training and um, inferences. But the inferences can take a really long time. So, you know, folks who have done AI, you know, if you have it on a desktop without GPU acceleration, you know, it can be 10, 20, even 100 times slower than if you have a specialized piece of hardware that's really, really good at multiplying these big, big numbers, these big collection of numbers together. Um, and, you know, again, one of the nice things about this is that there's about a megabyte of RAM um, on, on the chip specifically so that you can have everything in memory you know, when I did uh, TensorFlow micro for, TensorFlow Life for microcontrollers, we tried to do this hack where we would like burn to the flash and then like do execute in place. It was very complicated and kind of nasty. It meant that there was a this high startup time because we had to like burn the model, which is quite large, into memory because we couldn't into flash memory because we couldn't hold it into RAM. Um, but you know, that's one of the nice things about this chip is it's designed specifically for that kind of high RAM usage that you need where you have to have a full image in your memory and you're manipulating it and the models in memory so you can load it very quickly. Um, only trade-off is, is like, 
you know, any AI project, you do have to train the model. Now it does come with a couple models um, and I'll show you, what, try to do a demo of one, but you know, depending on what you want to detect visually or audibly, you're gonna have to train it. So you have to collect a lot of data and you have to do the training, um, you know, in PyTorch, and then you can create the model, export it, and then program it into the microcontroller, the Mac 78,000. And the training is, it's not, extremely complicated but it's not trivial right you need to have someone who kind of knows what they're doing you have to have a lot of really good data um and you have to have a lot of patience and you have to have fast processor because creating the model is actually quite difficult and takes that difficult like uh code wise but uh, complicated computationally so you have to do it on a desktop computer you can't do it on the chip you have to do it separately and then load the model in but pytorch is a very popular um device tool that's used for taking all this data and kind of smushing it around and figuring out what is the collection of layers you need to apply um, to the data you've got to be able to train and identify what you want to identify. Uh, so thankfully, ADI has a nice video series. I watched a bunch of it, uh, taking you step by step, how to do training, what kind of data is good, and then how to apply it to the Max 78000, which is their core AI on the edge chip. And then when you program it, you're going to use the built-in DAP programmer that comes with the kit. Uh, you plug it into the USB-C. It's kind of uh, cute and witty. And then you can select which processor you want to program in because there's actually two processors inside. One is for video and one is for audio. Uh, so that way you can have, um, you, you could have one processor do both. But in this case, I think they wanted to demonstrate that uh, the speed you can get from having um, the both commands split between the two. And also each one is pre-wired to um the camera or to the i2s input there's uh, lots of example codes and here's some models that they have they have you know this uh portrait cat or dog detection i showed you that before face id um wildlife to detect like deers or uh cars outdoors or people um digit detection that's kind of the standard handwriting detection um and but there's uh, tutorials on how to take enough data that you can then train it um, also, training models, to be honest, is not, uh, there's tutorials on how to do it. One nice thing is you don't have to use TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers. You're actually, because it's the accelerated processor, you can actually use like TensorFlow Lite for real. Um, but do be aware that the model has to fit within that amount of RAM that's available on the Max 78000. There's also a feather that they made for this chip. So, you know, if you want to, once you've got the camera, you've got your prototype developed and you want to maybe use some other feather compatible hardware to design your own uh you know prototypes and product before going to file manufacture um i thought this is a beautiful light blue board and the dev kit is in stock it says one in stock but there's 417 in the factory which means that they can get it to you within a day or two um so you can pick one up if you would like to experiment with video or audio recognition so i thought we could do a quick demo on the overhead now, yeah. because it's a live demo, I'm going to say, I hope, I hope it works. So I've got, focus. Uh, it's not a focus on, on purpose because it's going to be focused on the screen. Uh, but this is Brad Pitt. Just be unbelieving. believe me. I, I am Brad Pitt. Yeah. And um, the demo they've got is, oh, sorry, I have to remember to tilt up. There you go. So you can see. You can see Brad Pitt. You can see Brad Pitt. Yeah, you can see that it recognized Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah there you, go. you can see it. Um, so it, it detects like famous people. It's it's trained yeah. on um, models of uh, celebrities. So I'm sorry, it's a camera of a camera camera of a camera of a camera of a camera I know, but uh, uh, oh and also it can detect words so if i say up down oh no there you go uh, one second let me get this closer show it up down left right one two three it's pretty good. She's actually pretty good compared, you know, compared yeah, to on the edge. On the edge. So, um, yeah, check out this, uh, Devin. This is the this is taken apart. It's got a battery. Uh, it's got these beautiful boards, the uh, video stuff and the audio stuff. A very cute, compact little uh, camera kit. Nice work. Yeah, and that is this week's eye on MPI. Eye on MPI.